Let's use this terrible economic crisis to question assumptions behind economic theory and to rethink the role of the state, finance, and austerity in promoting growth and innovation. Okay, we are still here in Brazil, and I have here Gary Dimsky, Professor of Applied Economics at the University of Leeds, who's going to be talking about the role of state investment banks in providing patient long-term committed finance. It is true that state investment banks receive uh, flows of funds from government because they are part of the servicing the government's mission of taking care of responding to historical inequities uh, in, the, in nations that are moving from underdevelopment toward more mature phase of growth. This includes taking care of providing loans and means of banking for, for regions in the country that have been left out of the trajectory of economic growth for small and medium enterprises that wouldn't otherwise receive loans. And in addition, um, making available support for the large state-owned enterprises that are actually accounting for much of the success of countries like Brazil in export and in building an industrial base or rebuilding their industrial base. There, it's really important to have those state investment banks as an anchor for the state banking system, in part because they have a mandate to serve the entire population and to be sure that everybody is financially included. Um, and that, that's a role shared with other public banks. In addition, they provide for, they undermine, they, they undergird the flow of income that provides the basis for economic growth in, in Brazil or other countries as a whole. This provides the basis for the kinds of loans that other banks can make, the private sector banks, the banks that, that are making loans to, to individuals, to companies, and so on, doing their everyday banking business, participating in a market that is healthy because it has these institutions, which again, if we were not in a situation where there was historical absences of some institutions and historical problems of inequality, maybe we, we wouldn't need them, but that's not the world we're living in. We're living in a world where this is part of the reason for Brazil's success, and it's going to be part of the reason for Brazil banking system as a whole to be a successful, non-crisis-ridden banking system. But why do you think then that banks like BNDS, state development banks, get so attacked for, you know, they are too active, they are picking winners, they are crowding out private finance, is well, what we're told. They're, they're, you're told that they're crowding out private finance because there's a sense that essentially if they weren't there that the private market would step in. But we have to keep in mind the only reason the private market is there and willing to take those, uh, the, 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 that the private, we can think about the private sector coming in and taking those risks is because the floor of aggregate demand and of exports and the flows of income have been stabilized. There's a sense that, yes, if we compare with a developed country, more of the investment financing and other things would be provided through the private sector. But we have to keep in mind that the private sector in other, other countries' banking systems has not been good at disciplining itself and has been very crisis prone. Hasn't happened in Brazil in part because the public banks both stabilize the market and do ensure that the banks serve public purposes and are not just out for speculative gain. Policy is no industrial policy at all. Um, the implication um, of that view is that the role of the state, uh, whether in developing countries or developed countries, should be simply to provide... That they're actually much more complementing each other. So the public sector, is, when it's good in, in, in sort of supporting innovation, it's not replacing the private sector, but it's in many ways either leading the private sector to new opportunities.